This lab is going to go along with your genetics assessment that you're working on in lecture. It involves isolating DNA from Escherichia coli and doing a gel electrophoresis on that DNA. You're going to stain and observe the gel and understand how this process is done. There are a number of components that come in this kit and you'll receive a handout that explains the procedure. I'd like to go over the procedure a little bit here so that you understand what we're doing before you come into lab. Provided in this kit are suspended E. coli cells. They are going to provide the DNA for electrophoresis. Also in the kit is, es is EDTA, that's ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. This chemical is going to complex with metal ions that are found as cofactors in an enzyme that's going to break down DNA. Once the cell is disrupted, there are enzymes present in the cell that will destroy the DNA. We don't want this to happen. So we add EDTA into the mixture to chelate the metal ions that are associated with these enzymes. When they are found in the active site, EDTA blocks the active site and DNA can't fit into that enzyme. There's a proprietary detergent that's included in this kit called Sarcosil. Sarcosil is used to disrupt cell walls and membranes. Remember that E. coli has a cell wall and has a cell membrane and the DNA is going to have to get past that. So the detergent is going to help to disrupt the cell wall and the membrane. It also is going to denature, the pro denature proteins. The most important proteins we're thinking about here are those that would damage the DNA, such as DNA aces. RNAase is an enzyme that's going to be included to degrade the RNA. We don't want to isolate the RNA, so we want to make sure that it is degraded in the process. Protease is also included uh, in the kit. This degrades proteins, including that DNAase. There are proteins there that we don't want glomming on to the DNA, so we uh, use the, the proteases to destroy it. And the proteases are also going to help to damage the cell wall to destroy it so that we can get the DNA out of the cell. Think of the cell as a chain link fence and the DNA is inside. And we need to break that chain link fence in order to get the DNA out. Sodium chloride is also included in the kit. Sodium chloride dissociates into ions, the sodium ion and the chloride ion, and they're going, the sodium ion is going to be attracted to the negatively charged DNA. This allows the DNA to clump together so we can actually get it out in one solid piece. Uh, the sodium chloride also is going to denature proteins, including enzymes. We'll be using ethanol to spool the DNA out of the mixture. DNA is not soluble in ethanol, so it's going to clump together with the help of sodium chloride and make one big snotty glob. We use the ethanol at a very cold temperature because this stabilizes the hydrogen bonds in the DNA, allowing it to clump together and come out as one big mass. Finally, we use a buffer. Buffers are commonly used in biology to keep the pH uh, where it should be, which is around neutral and this is going to help to uh, extract the DNA as well as allow these enzymes to work properly. Enzymes have a very narrow pH range at which they will work and the TRIS buffer helps this to uh, be accomplished. First you're going to uh, get a tube of Escherichia coli, you'll add the EDTA to it, then you're going to add RNA ACE solution and incubate it for five minutes. After that you'll add Sarcosil solution and protease solution. So everything will be added with pipettes here. Mixing is done by uh, turning upside down. That's called inversion. We don't shake. Shaking could damage the DNA. So we're just going to turn it upside down. Five times is typically enough. So the combination now of the sarcosil and the protease is going to break up the cell wall. Protease is going to cut up intracellular uh, proteins, especially the unfolded ones. Now we're going to take that tube and put it in a water bath. The water baths are in the back of the room. This one will be set at 45 degrees Celsius. Uh, following the 20 minute incubation, you're going to add the sodium chloride. Again, mix it by inverting. The DNA now is almost ready to come out of the solution. 
and you'll pour it into a 50 milliliter beaker. After this you're going to overlay the solution with ice cold ethanol and then you are going to submerge the end of a glass rod just below the interface of the isopropanol and the aqueous DNA solution and quickly swirl this glass rod between your thumb and your finger or you can hold it between your two palms and periodically dip down to the bottom and eventually you're going to get DNA collecting on the end of that glass rod. <coughs> Excuse me, it's going to look a lot like a Q-tip. Uh, if you continue to dip like this you can see that you'll pull a large snotty glob of DNA out of this solution and then you're going to save this and allow it to rehydrate. After you remove the rod from the beaker, you let the excess alcohol drip off. You'll put it into a tube that contains Tris buffer and twirl it a couple of times and then cover it with a laboratory uh, film called parafilm. It's like plastic wrap. I'm going to put your initials group number on the tube and then we're going to let this rehydrate until the, the next period. When it's ready, we're going to prepare the DNA for electrophoresis. There'll be some equipment that you'll be using in this lab that will be new to you. That includes the micropipette. Micropipettes are designed to deliver very small volumes. You'll need disposable pipette tips. We have these sterile, so you must maintain aseptic technique when you use them. I'll demonstrate how to use a micropipette. You'll also be using micro centrifuge tubes. Because we have such small volumes, we need to use small tubes to house those small volumes. You're going to prepare your DNA by transferring a small amount to fresh test tubes. You're going to be using two different volumes and in these two volumes you're going to be adding a loading solution. The loading solution is a blue dye. We use this gel loading solution because it has a lower molecular weight than DNA. So when we put it in the gel, it's actually going to move faster via electrophoresis than the DNA will. DNA will not be visible while it is moving through the, uh, through the electrophoresis gel. Because of this, we don't know how long to run the gel, but by putting the dye in, when the dye reaches the end of the gel, then we know that electrophoresis has been complete. The gel loading solution has a lower molecular weight than DNA and it travels faster through the gel. Two dilutions are made in case there's too much DNA in your sample. If there's too much DNA it will be impeded from moving through the gel. Try not to splash the mixtures up the sides of the tubes when you're doing this. There's su such small amounts that we want to keep everything down toward the bottom of the tube. The equipment that we'll be using includes an electrophoresis chamber, a prepared agarose gel with a comb in a gel bed. I will have prepared these gels for you. The comb will still be inserted in the gel. The comb is put in there uh, when the gel is hardening. The gel is very much like jello, so when it hardens, we're going to get wells created in the gel with the comb. There are several different types of combs, as you, as you can see in the above image. Uh, it depends on the number of wells that you want. You're again going to be using a micro pipette in order to deliver the samples into the wells, and you'll be using a buffer. The buffer is going to contain ions necessary to conduct electricity. Electricity is going to flow through this, this chamber and it's going to allow the DNA to move. The smaller the DNA fragment, the faster it's going to move. Likewise, the more negatively charged the fragment, the faster it would move. And then finally, you're going to need a power supply in order to provide the electricity. In order to prepare the gel, you're going to remove the rubber dams or the tape from the ends of the gel bed. You should be very careful not to tear the gel when you do this. You can run your fingernail down the sides or you can uh, use a thin plastic knife in order to um, break the seal. Then you're going to remove the comb. You want to pull straight up 
without damaging any of the wells. The gel is going to be kept in its bed and it's going to be put into the electrophoresis chamber. There's a little uh, notch where it's going to fit and then you are going to fill the chamber with the uh, diluted electrophoresis buffer. <coughs> You'll load the sample and there will be two groups that will be sharing each gel. The uh, samples are going to be put into the wells using the micropipetter. It's critical that you don't shove the micropipetter down through the gel uh, simply because you don't want the, gel, the sample in the gel, you want it in the well. This uh, loading die has an additional component to it which is glycerol which is heavier than uh, the buffer and as a result this allows the sample to stay in the well and not float out into the buffer. Once you and your partners have put your samples into the gels, you're going to plug, uh, plug it in, you put the cap on it, you'll plug it in and you're going to turn on the power. As you watch it, you're going to see that uh, the front loading gel, the die, excuse me, is going to move through the gel and you'll see this blue line that is moving through. You'll watch this blue line. You want it to get about halfway through, if not more, before we shut off the power. Once we turn off the power then, you will not be able to see the DNA, so we have to stain it. There are a number of means that we can use to stain it. The one that we're going to be using is called InstaStain, and it uses methylene blue. Methylene blue is, is very useful for staining because it's positively charged, and you know DNA is negatively charged. So the positively charged dye is going to be attracted to the DNA and is going to change it. The, um, Something known as ethidium bromide can also be used. Ethidium bromide has special requirements for disposal and this is the reason we don't use it. Most likely I will be doing this staining for you because lab will probably be over. When you come back to lab the next time then you're going to look at your gel and this is what we expect to see. The dark band that is close to the well is DNA with bound proteins because the proteins weren't destroyed and they stuck onto the DNA, the DNA was quite heavy and it couldn't move through the gel. However, the DNA you see further through the gel is what you expect to see and of course this DNA has moved through as one big clump. Now when we do a DNA fingerprint, we see bands of DNA and not this smear. Why do you think that's so? See you in lab.